presents the Wisconsin Badgers against the Iowa Hawkeyes, where it's an unofficial homecoming of sorts, as today three former Iowa assistant coaches return to Kinnick Stadium for the first time since becoming key Wisconsin coaches. And a pleasant good afternoon to you. I'm Mike Dool, and along with Mike Riley, we'll have the play-by-play -play report in this one. The Badgers and the Hawkeyes on a beautiful football tough affair for both ball clubs. That's a great rivalry that's existed for many, many years, and I expect a similar type game today, even though Barry Alvarez just getting started up there with the new staff and as a new coach. They're going to come in here fired up. You can bet on that. Let's talk a little bit about Barry Alvarez. I'm from the Notre Dame program, but prior to that, he was a big, big factor of the Hayden Pride success story here in Iowa City. He certainly was. After having great success at Mason City in high school, he came onto the, the staff. He did a great job working with the linebackers primarily so i have a little experience there with my son jimmy a great guy well liked by the players and a, a real motivator and i gotta believe that he's got these kids from wisconsin sky high for this game simply because of that association you mentioned three coaches from iowa up there working against the, their former uh, coaches down there in iowa city hawks are three and one badgers one and three in the conference the hawks one and oh the badgers zero and one the victory for Iowa came last week, Spartan Stadium, East Lansing, Michigan, in one whale of a defensive battle. The Hawkeyes held the Spartans to just seven points. The big reason, Melvin Foster. Well, Melvin Foster really came into his own. He's a great player. He came to the University of Iowa with great credentials. He's a, a super player. He's good speed, good size. He's a strong kid, and he's really coming around now, and I look for him to have a great season the rest of this year. Foster got an interception in that matchup against the Spartans. He had 20 tackles, out of 10 tackles. Let's take a look at that interception. He was named the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. Then Sports Illustrated came up and nationally made him the National Defensive Player of the Week. And I like this comment after the game. He said, I felt like Nick Bell running that football. Look at him going. About the same size, as a matter of fact. There's a shot of Mr. Foster. The linebackers are going to factor in this one. The linebacker play is really coming around. Well, for sure, John Derby, an excellent player. One of the guys from Wisconsin playing against the old home state, so to speak. But he and Melvin Foster really come around for a great tandem in there, backing up that line. Good people up front, and that helps those linebackers considerably, you know, game after game. It's the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Wisconsin Badgers from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes take on the back. You should then play next on your St. Line Home for Sports, Iowa Public Television. <laughs> Shining on Kinnick Stadium at Iowa City, all set for Big Ten football action. The Batchers and the Hawkeyes tee it up. A beautiful day for football. Sun is shining, all the black and gold you'll ever want to see, a smattering of red and white. And you take a look at the Hawkeyes, chomping at the bit to get out onto the field of the foot. There's the guy here, the director of the Hawkeye Upper Downs, who is really coming close to the middle of the football game to the Hawkeyes. The Hawkeyes have... Haven't beat the Hawks in 76, and here they come in the swarm. It's also interesting to note, Mike, that as the Hawkeyes come out here, and executing and playing. It doesn't uh, have anything to do with knowing plays or knowing schemes or personalities. You've got to come out and play, and, and, and the one that plays the best will win. 
you know, we'll, we'll check them out real quick, how much you're playing uh, our offers and things of that nature. And, and uh, if they do, if they don't come in here and just try to play good fan and hard on football, we're, we're going to burn them. I'll just tell you that, because we know what they know, and we can do that for a game. Wisconsin and the Badgers elect to receive in this one, and the Hawks will defend the goal to our guys, probably to Southfield, and we have a fight for them. I've been able to win, but 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 i have been able to win 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 but i have been
Lowry in the scramble, and he can go. The pickup will be three and a half, maybe four yards as he turns the corner. He's got that time Moses Santos dropped off from the defensive end. They want to throw that quick pass again over to that slot back. You might be able to see it here, but Moses Santos goes out. He covers the guy very, very well. He's always looking to that side. Now that's the run for it. And Santos makes a great play here to stop him. Along with Eddie Polly to keep him short of that first down. And on the change for fourth down, Wisconsin tries to get a quick snap off. The punter will be Brad Brecky. Will let it go out of bounds at about the 25 yard line. And Iowa in his first possession, right to left in front of us. You see Matt Rogers. Well, who will direct the Iowa effort. That's right, Matt Rogers really coming in the head going off for last year. He's a little bit crazy at times. You might have heard that a warning on the the field too far. The one warning, I guess the second one's a penalty maybe, but at the same time, Matt Rogers, I think, is really doing the job now. He's got, he looks like he's got the confidence that he really needed last year again. A little bit shaky at times, wasn't seeing the field quite as well as he might want to, but he really looks like he's feeling it down. Right side, Tom Smith. Damon Wilkes with left side, stacked up to Galva, and Nick Bell. Look out, somebody's going to get hurt. It's out to the 39-yard line. Well enough for the first down. And Eddie Fletcher is the sacrificial lamb to get in front of Nick Bell. Good, good blocking on the right side. Watch him to see if anything in. You see the Jawa going up into the middle, but as everything came down, Nick Bell did a great job of adjusting there, seeing the space to the outside. and picked up the first. Good, good running job. 38-yard line is the line of scrimmage on first and 10. It fell to the line of Jim again, three. On this one, you see Sean Smith flip to the right side and here to the left side, and we will mention that John Falloon is not in uniform today. Pat McGettigan makes the stop. You see in the backfield, Suyaba, along with Stewart, and it was actually Bell to get the start in the backfield. Smith and Drew's the white up, and some familiar names along the... Offensive line, second and seven. Bell for the third straight carry. <laughs> Eddie Fletcher finally runs him down, and Nick Bell gets the pickup of 23 yards at Iowa's third first down in the series. Well, you can see it there, too. Some great blocking up front. Look at those defensive backs. They're going after him. I swear, folks, those people don't want to stick their head in there too many times. <laughs> you can see that big guy coming at you. Left to the left. Five yards to carry there for Dick Bell. He's a, he's a player. Suyaba past the 35 and side the 35. He'll bring it to about the 33 before Dan back. Gets the stop. Here's that Wisconsin interior defensive line, and I guarantee you they just as good as the offensive line here in the section. And you just mentioned that Dan Bat uh, talking with Dan McCartney during the week. He had high praises for Dan. He's an outstanding player. He said, We have a lot of good players up in Wisconsin. He's just not enough in the uh, securing backup role. He said, There's a lot of potential there as he goes on. Second and eight, Nick Bell with no place to go. Five is wide off the block and back the other way. You'll pick up any of y'all before Brendan Lynch gets hold of him. Don Davey also in on the stop. Davey, a leader in tackles and also going for a fourth straight year as a first team academic all American. He has 30 years back, and the lead back of the Wisconsin unit is Greg Thomas, the defensive back, and that's something you don't want to have. Third and six, and Rogers with his first pass, sets up at the 40, and it's over the head of Sean Smith. And it'll be fourth down. 
has been an interesting fan as John Smith coming from the right side across the middle, but also Michael Saunders coming from the left side. They were within five yards of each other. And maybe that's why he threw it over their head. Iowa's first possession of the football game. And on some Jeff Phillips. And the attempt will be 50 yards. No, sir. Line to the right. He had the distance. 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 And normally that ball would hook. The way those sidewinders kick that ball, sometimes that hooks back to the left. But maybe the wind held it out there. So the line of scrimmage will be the 33, and Wisconsin comes out for a second offensive possession. We saw no huddle in the first offensive possession. And Tony Lowry sucked him down with the running back, Robert Williams. Double wide right with Lionel Crawford and Tony Spade. Tank up in the eye. As Miller behind Kevin Ellison, the fullback. Wisconsin is obviously working the X factor, the unknown factor, showing a lot of formation and no huddle. And now Ellison is in the backfield to stack up in an eye with Williams. We saw the tight end stack up in the first set of downs and then split off to his normal down position. That's right, now he put the two back back in the back just instead of having that clock man. So you're, you're right, doing a lot of different things, trying to get that off guard. Lowry. Over the middle, he finally gets rid of it, and it's past the 45-yard line to the 46, and Moses Santos makes the stop on Lionel Crawford. Lowry can't scramble. This is a good job by Lowry. You'll see the pressure there. It's a good coverage downfield. And you'll see the pressure coming at him. And he's smart enough. He knows exactly where that line of scrimmage is and gets rid of it before he crosses it through the first down. Jim Ware splits wide to the left with Tony Spade. Ellison and Williams stopped up behind Lowry. You can see there about a 50% completion. The one thing that Lowry does have, though, is nice to do that with it. You have that running ability to scramble and, and get the ball upfield. That's Ware over the middle. And he is brought down by John Kirby, who's right on top of him. Kirby, one of the Wisconsinites, on the eye of a here, one of eight. He is from Oconomo, on the Wisconsin. Well, one of the things John Kirby's done for that linebacker, too, he plays a strong side, the same side that Brad Watts plays. And that really, and the job that he does in that strong side just takes all three a lot of times that weak side like that to just see Kelvin Foster, how well he can run and chase the ball. That is Kelvin himself, really doing a big job. Robert Williams had no place to go. On second and six from near the midfield, and Melvin Foster and Eddie Polly get the stop. Wisconsin now forces four in the aerial lane. And in a second offensive possession, Hawks picked up 43 yards, but fell short on the 50 yard field goal attempt by Jeff Miller. And we're here at possession number two, just inside the eight minute mark. It's third and six. Caught up with Lowry that time. First one through with Melvin Foster. Made him cut the ball in. How am I going to get out of this? Well, you'll see some real good pressure here because they came with the blitz. There's Elvin Foster running through there free. Leroy Smith on the outside containing that play. Good effort, good to drop a defense. And the punch will run his at the 25-yard line. A 32-yard kick the first time around. 34 yards to check this time around for Brad Brecky. And no return for Iowa. Second offensive set to Hawkeyes. There's a picture, Dan McCartney. Now that's an odd play. There's a buddy of yours. He's a guy. Great guy. Born and raised by the city. Played a city. I played for the Hawkeyes. Coached for the Hawkeyes. 
talking to him during the week, said, how's he going to feel over there? He's well, something to get to have to do. But what a great individual. It's a great dad. The chief of police here in Iowa City for years. Outstanding. but uh, he's done a great job. That defensive line is really doing a super job, which helps in the linebackers uh, score as well. Five guys in the back is matching up here at Phoenix Stadium in Iowa City. Big assignment for the Hawkeyes next week. Number one, Michigan at Ann Arbor. That's what the, ba uh, the Badgers got last week in the Big Ten opener at Camp Randall Stadium, and 41 nothing was the final Wolverines, obviously, with the upper hand on the Badgers. That'll be a tough one for the Hawkeyes. The one thing the Hawkeyes have done, he's, he's going in there. And I would say Pretty tough football uh, during the Hayden Fry uh, reign here. Hughes is left. Smith is right. Iowa for the second straight possession. Starts from the 25. Nick Bell turns the corner. Out to the 34-yard line. Short of the first down by about half a yard. It's Scott Nelson gets in line for some punishment. How many, how many guys made the contact before the snap was made? Well, quick count of five or six, I think. Yeah, you can see a couple of them ducking three. their heads and not really putting the shoulder in, so. though. Yeah, that's just smart, as far as I know. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't send a young man to college and make bad decisions, do you? Second, and about a foot. Bell now with 10 yards, 11 carries, 5 carries. Got his man, that is Mike Saunders at midfield in Wisconsin territory and up for the first down. That's a nice, nice play by the Hawkeyes. You'll see Rogers go back here, fake that quick pitch, but he's going to downfield. But he looked at Sean Smith on the left side running the deep pattern. He was covered. Then he saw Saunders curling into the middle, and Saunders did a great job of finding that open area. And obviously Rogers was able to get it to him, so a good pickup for the Hawks. That was Troy Vincent on the res on the uh, stopping the end of the reception, and slow to get up for the Iowa Hawkeyes is Ted Belliser, another Wisconsinite out of Green Bay. Boy, he's been a big part of the Hawkeye success story in the trenches. Well, I'll tell you what, like that whole offensive line. Yep, up. They're young. It's a young group. Really tough, knocking people backwards off the ball, and that's why you see Nick Bell and Tony Stewart run for good yardage. First and ten, the call goes to Bell. He'll pick up four and a half yards, and it'll be second and six from the 45. So good and prize with the high, high premium on the stadium. He really doesn't feel that many ball players are ready unless they know the extra to know, they've been in the country. And it takes a while to get that done, but uh, boy, these first few games. You can see that offensive line really mature. They all had some playing time in past years, but this year they're playing together as a unit and really coming on. Yeah, Bellis is just a sophomore. He's making contributions already. But basically, he looks for the junior seniors. Bell again. First down, Iowa. And through the 30 yard line is Nick Bell, who is averaging just better than 10 yards per carry. Greg Thomas gets in his way at the 30. Watch the blocking up front. Run through. The jaw off there in front going to the outside. And look at the hole he's had there. I don't know, Mike, you and I could probably pick up five on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Not much more, though. There's another good shot of it right there, but see the opening he had to get him started. Facebook, Sandra 31. Goyava and Bell. And guess who? Bell gets inside the 30. And during the five minute mark here in the first quarter, that was James Brown. The next to Django. I didn't know he got out. Oh, that's another story. I'll be right <laughs> Mike Peroni in there is the offensive guard now. You don't lose a whole lot of egos. He's a big, big 
Big Dan also is about people back there. 6'2 and 270. He also a sophomore to back up Pellister. Second and eight, the 30, the 29 yard line. Good get Wisconsin right. And putting the arm up and then checking it in quite widely. Here's one Matt Rogers. John Casey led the charge. Let's take a look. They came with those outside people pretty quick on that ride. If you look at that field for Michael Crombie, running the deep batter, he didn't have any time to really set up and breathe that. He's going to roll it up and throw the ball. Here was that pathetic. It was the real pressure that time. The loss will be nine and a half yards. Third and a fur piece. Nick fell out of the backfield. It's five to thirty. Back to what would be the original line of scrimmage, minus the sack before Melvin Hunter runs him out of bounds. Right, Melvin Hunter, that time a three-year letterman for the Badgers as linebacker, did a good job reading that play, seeing that Rogers was in a little bit of trouble, saw Nick Bell coming out of the backfield, and as that ball was dumped off to him, he was right there to knock him out of bounds. Way short of the first down, so we'll see Skillet come back in, try another field goal. It'll be a 45-yard attempt, second attempt of the first quarter for Jeff Skillett with Jim Hartley holding. Yep. That time he read it just the way it should have been read. And what we don't know is how stiff is the wind that high off the playing surface, 15 to 20 mile an hour of the gust. Well, you see the kick here. It's a low line drive, so I don't think the wind had much effect on it. But he right through the uprights for a good field goal after missing that first one, kicked it to the right. This time he put her down the middle. They get Jeff Skill, and I wish him a lot of luck because he's a good, solid young man, but he's got a great leg. And he has a lot of power there. He has to maintain that confidence. And after last week's game, he, he felt good about it, but uh, he has to stay in there and keep popping them away. So the Hawkeyes draw first blood in this one, a drive of 47 yards and eight plays. And at the 343 mark of the first quarter, we've got a 3 nothing ball game. Boy, you couldn't pick out a better more beautiful football Saturday. Pleasantly cool and a light breeze and all sorts of sunshine upstairs. There's your deep man for the Wisconsin Badgers. That's Rory Lee, and he can bring it. A yard deep. <laughs> but not this time. He draws a lot of black jerseys. Led by Matt Whitaker. Sophomore and on the 15-yard return, third offensive possession of the first half, Wisconsin. That's right, you're right. He could really bring it out of there, but a good high hanging kick gave the Hawkeyes a good chance to get down there, shut off the blockers, and then make four or five people right around him when he got to the 15-yard line. Brian White's in there also. He's, there's a guy that I've liked ever since he started here at Iowa. He's a real gunner. He goes on those kick teams and runs down there, flies into people. Good, hard-hitting guy. There you have it, eight plays, 47 yards with a 45-yard field goal for the Hawkeyes to take the lead, three to nothing. Kevin Ellison and Mark Montgomery are stacked up in the eye behind Tony Lowry. Double wide left, no huddle. Got his man, and that's Tony Spade out in the flat. And the pickup will be near 10 yards, and I believe enough for the first down. Brian Wise to make the stop. You can be well sure of one thing. The seven guys down in the field in the striped shirts are going to be keeping track of down in this I, one. I think last year everybody <laughs> learned a lesson. Last week, too. Yep. Everyone learned a lesson. Second in about a foot. Ellison and Montgomery. That's Montgomery for the first down out to the 30-yard line. Up 
There's the guy in charge of it all, Jim Johnson, Matt Rulin. To make the stop, first and 10, Wisconsin. That's Montgomery again, and a second five-yard pickup for the Badgers, who have one glaring weakness before John Klein. Yeah, there's Melvin Foster once him. again in that tackle. Oh, that was Melvin Foster. I'm sorry, I said Klein. Uh, the thing, back of the matter is, Wisconsin only has 200 yards rushing in four football games, an average of 50 per game, but they picked up a little bit of green. 20 tackles in a game, I tell you, that's a lot of uh, head knocking. Melvin Foster, as we said earlier, is really coming into his own. Montgomery with a pickup of 12, perhaps 13. Past the 45-yard line in three straight running plays. If anything, Iowa is not expecting the run. The game book says this, Wisconsin will come out throwing. And while we've got just a second here on the strategy of Barry Alvarez, when you work a no huddle offense, Mike Riley, you're talking about exceptional burdens on your quarterback, on your wide receivers, well, on the whole offensive unit, particularly being on the road and all the noise. Well, that's it. And you, it's all, all, basically all audible, so you got to be listening all the time. And if you miss it, up and down the line, you, you obviously create more chances of mistakes doing this. But uh, this drive, Wisconsin's coming out and executing pretty well. That's Montgomery, who had three rushes and 23 yards. He picks up another three. And it was Rod Davis from the interior of the Iowa defensive line on the nose. To bring him down, it'll be second and seven. Wide to the right side now for the Badgers is Lionel Crawford. Tony Spate will split left. And Lowry brings him up to the line and we see a split backfield now. No eye formation. Whole pocket full of tricks here in formation. Got his man over the middle and out of the backfield. That was Mark Montgomery, and apparently enough for the first down before Melvin Foster got him. Maybe something to think about, the fact that they're not using that huddle. You see Lowry here looking over the field pretty well and zips it in there between the linebackers. But you got to think, you know, you got Alvarez, a pass defensive coach, but Carney and Bernie Wyatt as pass defensive coaches for the Hawks. They know how those signals come in from the sidelines, the defensive unit. They got to, I got to believe they know that by going with no huddle, it creates a problem for the Hawk defense and having to call everything by audible. Good green that time for Robert Williams, junior out of Columbus, Georgia. He gets the first down and a pickup of 12 before Doug Book brings him down. And Wisconsin's eaten up some green. After the first two series, and they couldn't really go anywhere. All of a sudden, they got themselves together in the sidelines, and they're just hammering it now. They're just playing hard-nosed, rock'em, sock'em football. Here's C. Williams, 200 yards rushing. Ball goes to Williams again. Derby's the first one to him. And he is finally brought down by, well, John Derby gets credit for the stop along with Jim Johnson. And we come to the end of the quarter here at Kennedy Stadium in Iowa City. And it's the Iowa Hawkeye with the edge. Three to nothing. Ah, the Wisconsin Badgers will be back with this second quarter in just a moment. Mike Newell, Mike Riley, back here at Kinnick Stadium. And the story in this one to this point has been Wisconsin's prolific passing attack in the early part of the first quarter and then a pretty productive running attack in the second part of the first quarter. As a matter of fact, in the air, Wisconsin six of six to five different receivers for 48 yards and three passing first downs. But Robert Williams and Mark Montgomery with the legs have been the big story in the late going of the first quarter. Let's start number two, second and seven. Williams elects 
to go to the outside. Clear sailing upstream to the 10-yard line. Inside the 10, well enough for the first down. And Wisconsin has something going before Doug Cook will send him out of bounds. Well, watch this. He does a great job of bouncing to the outside. You can see over there, Moses Santos looked like he had a turn to the inside, but he got tied up with that blocker. And Williams, smart enough with some good speed, jumped to the outside for a big game. It'll be first and goal that's marked at the eight-yard line. The gain is 18 yards for Robert Williams, and the Hawkeye fans are saying, tighten it up. Montgomery to the five-yard line. Well, I'll tell you this, the offensive side of the ball for Wisconsin, they move a lot of players in and out of the action. Melvin Foster gets credited for the stop at the five. We've seen three different running backs, Ellison, Montgomery, and Williams, and at least a half dozen wide receivers to this point. Double wide left, Faith, and Buffer. The eye formation, Ellison and Montgomery. It's Montgomery with no place to go. And again, I think it's worth mentioning, Mike Riley, that interior to the Wisconsin line Measures this way, tackle to tackle, 285, 322, 265, 321, and 276. Anything bigger than 300, I just can't imagine. <laughs> but they're doing the job at that time. The Hawkeye defense really popped in there. Matt Rulon underneath the pile. A good help for the linebackers and from the linebackers. Derby and uh, Melvin Foster to come in there to hold them to no game. Melvin Foster with two straight stops. He's going to have to make a third over the middle and in and out of the hands of Lionel Crawford with a flag going down in the end zone. There might have been some hand-to-hand -hand combat as the first incompletion goes up on the arm of Tony Lowry. Well, with the reaction of the Hawkeye defense, I think they're going to call it on Wisconsin maybe for offensive pass interference. Eddie Polly and Merton Hanks back there talking about it. Pass interference. Lost the down. Oh, that's a bitter pill to swallow for the Badgers, knocking on the door, losing the down and the completion. The only thing worse is if this kid catches, I can't remember who it was, but he catches the ball, he's in the end zone. Yep, we are going to throw him behind him a little bit. Number 13, Lionel Crawford. If he would have caught it one in, they really would have felt bad. This is Rich Thompson from 27, the marker, 37, the attempt. He drills it and just like that in the early stages of the second quarter we have a tie football game it's nice to have that kind of three-point ability to come off the bench isn't it well that's for sure and watch i watched him in warm-ups and he can really pop it you can see with those eight consecutive games the rich thomas he's, he's a very very good excellent kicker and it's nice to have that guy as you say mike the fact that they get halfway close and you're putting three points on the board. That time with a 15-yard penalty, they were able to still get something on the board. Back to that previous play, I know we didn't see it, but it was a pick play is what it amounted to. One of the deep or offensive receivers for Wisconsin was coming across behind the goal line, and he picked off uh, one of the Hawkeye defenders trying to cover Lionel Crawford, and the referee or the umpire standing right back there in that area through the flag. Thompson will tee it up at the 35. You heard the fight song on Wisconsin. Certainly one of the most recognizable and inspiring fight songs there is. Copied, imitated, and duplicated by how many high schools across the land. That's a Michigan fight song. You hear it everywhere. This will be Anila. A half yard deep. Handler sidesteps his way past the 20, and I believe the knee will drop up. They're indicating right on top of the 20. Jeff Handler, also from Wisconsin, from the northern Wisconsin town of Brule, 
Todd Strott makes the stop. And the Hawkeyes in their first possession of the second quarter. Uh, rather, their first possession of the second quarter and their third possession overall will move left to right in front of us. Smith to the right, Hughes to the left. The call goes to Tony Stewart. Second man stacked up, and he gets out past the 25. He'll pick up, oh, five and a half, let's call it six. Now you see the Hawkeyes come out with a little quicker huddle. A little strategy going on here between those coaches. Stewart again. This time he's tripped up to the 30-yard line. Pick up a three and a half or four. Just short of the first down marker with Gary Casper making the stop. This is interesting. I don't remember seeing the Hawkeyes do this, this ever. Is your, this is your basic two-minute drill with 12 minutes left there, in the half. That's huh? what it looks like. <laughs> but they are going to slow it down here to come in for a uh, measurement. I think it's going to be a little bit short of the first down, but nevertheless, it's, I think that sometimes those officials get tired of that quick offense, no huddle. They want to call timeout well, sure. and take a break. I need to break every now and then. <laughs> Used to be the slowdown tactic, tactic where you could ask for a measurement. Now they got to make a decision if your request is is at all proper. You saw inches for the first down. There's Tony Stewart creeping up on that 2,000 mark. Outstanding player. Last year he's hurt a little bit. The year before that also, and it's, it's a shame because he's one of those real quality running backs, and he stays healthy through his career at Iowa. He would have really put some numbers on the board. Here's Chet Gill making some adjustments on that defensive line where the Badgers did pick up some green and the late going of the first quarter and he got them the field goal. Stewart, third time the call, past the 34, <laughs> 35 and out to about the 40 and going elbow over earlobe. Here's the referee in this one, Scott Nelson. Watch this now, the umpire, Ed Hassel, he gets a pretty good shot here. Bang, right there, goodbye. Talk about fifth down. Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's paying for pass soon. <laughs> Come on, Tony. Yeah, hello. Stewart gets his fourth straight call, and he battles for two. Hawkeyes and the stop to Scott Nelson. Four rushing first downs to this point. It's kind of interesting the way this game's unraveling here. The Hawkeyes have taken the ball and moved it each time they've had it, but they only have three points on the board. So you've got to give that Wisconsin defense some credit, the fact that they are making it work for everything, but again, keeping in, keeping the score down. Saunders and Smith split wide to the left and second and eight. Stewart for the fifth straight carry and the marker goes down as he comes past the 45 to the 47. Looks like we're going to have a face mask. Finally. That was Scott Nelson. He's been all over the field for the Badgers to this point. Yeah, I think they're going to get holding here against Greg Hagener. Watch him. He's pulling out from the guard. Well, you might not see it, but right... There, he's hanging on to the guy. Right there, you see that, pushing from behind, and I think that's the guy they got. So this one will cost the Hawkeyes. It's Iowa's first penalty, isn't it? At least second. Offensive holding the call, so it's second down from the 33-yard line. Fox have to get to the 49-yard line for the first down. Hughes to the left, Smith to the right. Kuyaba and Tony Stewart are stacked up. Tony Stewart. Out to the 39-yard line, and Gary Casper the stop. Getting 
over the 2,000 yard mark is Tony Stewart. Uh, congratulations to Tony. He is number five on the Hawkeye all time rushing list. 160 yards short of the number four man on the ladder, Dennis Mosley. Going upstairs, and the center fielder brings it down. That's the freshman, Scott Nelson. Who's been all over this field, I mentioned, and the freshman from Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, comes up with a turnover. And that time from the release, you know he was just laying it up, hoping the receiver would get underneath That's it. right, Michael Saunders was an intended receiver, but it's way overthrow, and you can see where Michael Saunders is right there. And as he does overthrow it, the defending backs waiting there for the ball, pulls it down, Scott Nelson, and big turnover here for Wisconsin. You gotta believe over there on the Wisconsin side now, you got Barry Alvarez talking to those defensive units, but then for sure the offensive unit previously, Saying, hey, we're in this ball game, guys. If we don't beat ourselves, we can play tough with this team the way we're going right now. So I gotta believe there's a lot of encouragement on the Wisconsin side right now that they're in this football game a lot more than they probably thought they were gonna be. Well, good morning to the Wisconsin bench again, penetrating <laughs> inside the 35s. That's interesting. Barry Alvarez over there in the sideline talking to one of the officials wondering really what what are you calling here? I don't think they came out onto the field. I think it was just a matter as they get close to that sideline. I've never yeah. seen that call except Tell for Bo Buckler a couple yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to back off from yeah. the sideline. I thought it they had split further than the 35 yard line. The Badgers. Battle of field goals to this point. Skillet for Iowa, 45 yards. Late in the first, early in the second. Thompson for Wisconsin, 37 yards. First and 10, the Batchers. That's Lowry over the ball. And he wants to talk it over. Wisconsin going with the audible. All afternoon long, we have yet to see a huddle. Melvin Foster. Oh, I tell you, what a football game he had last week. And he's become a real force and a team leader for the Hawkeyes. Earlier, we asked Melvin what his role was on this particular Hawkeye team. My role is a very simple role. It's, uh, you know, they've, they've given me the freedom to go in and, and play football. Uh, if I make a mistake, I'm not getting yanked out of the game because I'm making a mistake anymore. Uh, Melvin, you play your football and show your leadership, and in turn, everybody else will huddle around you and do the same. Now, there's no question that's working this year because Melvin is having a great year in his first uh, four games. 44 tackles leading the team. Outstanding player. He's a guy that has a great size, speed, and strength. Uh, he's, he's a real pro prospect because of that. And I tell you what, he's just... Being the fact he's playing all the time, even though he did last year, but taking that leadership role, he's really maxing out on what he can do, and he's doing it well. And that's an assessment from a former linebacker, Mike Riley, All-American here at the University of Iowa. And uh, I thought you were going to say Melvin Foster is doing it just like you told him how to do it, just how you taught him, huh? Well, I've talked to him a few times, and <laughs> Melvin's listening good. pretty good. Uh, that old boy. <laughs> First and ten. Lowry sets up at the 25, and he's got his man over the middle. That'll be Brown. And Scott Plate puts the stop on him. Tom Brown, junior out of Milwaukee. Look at Scott Plate. No huddle again. Double left, it's Lionel Crawford and Tony Spade. To the right side will be Brown. Second and one. Spate completion at the 45 yard line and he battles his way to midfield well enough for the first down. Now that's where Wisconsin can keep you thinking. It's second and one. And Lowry goes upstairs. Well, and the, and the way they're mixing things up here, you'll see a real quick pass out there. There's a little hitch pattern and up to the first down. Good strategy. But you got to remember how 
Wisconsin came out and started that in the first couple series. A little quick pass here, a little quick pass. Then they went to the run. The third series, they came out and just ran at the, the Hawkeyes. Got the field goal. Now they're coming back to this. So they're really doing a good job of keeping the Hawkeyes guessing. Merton Hanks, the stop for Iowa. And here's Lowry on the whoa, whoa. Robert Williams, <laughs> who is belted to the ground by Melvin Foster. Oh, belted. He really put the hit on him here. To, Williams is making a move, cut back against the grain. And just as he made that one step, there is Melvin eating his lunch. Loss will be a yard, second and 11. Lowry for Wisconsin, the quarterback out of Columbus, Ohio, has three passing first downs. He's eight of nine for 71 yards in the air. Williams finds some running room inside the 45 to the 41 yard line. Leroy Smith. And not close enough for a measurement, maybe a yard short. Williams not all that big, 5'9", 185 pounds, but uh, he's got those quick feet. Jumps up through that hole that time very quickly. It's a good blocking for him, but then once he sees that hole, he's up there and through it for almost a 10-yard game, but a little bit short of the first. Eight carries and 42 yards now for Robert Williams. He's stacked up in the eye with Kevin Ellison. Third and one, and it's Lowry on the rollout. First down and a yard or two. And Lowry's keeping the Hawkeyes guessing. John Kirby angles him out of bounds. And you gotta hand it to the Badgers. Well, some good faking here. Look at it, a good fake there to Williams. And the Hawkeyes, everybody converging on the middle. John Kirby sees it, tries to get out there, but he can't chase Lowry down until he gets that sideline. A lot of people might remember Lowry came to Wisconsin. He was a, an option type of quarterback, so he has all the running ability that you want. And he plays like that. He can, he can sure keep a defense on us. 38-yard line, first and 10. Flags go down. Apparently the whistle before the snap. You know, I should mention something here, Mike, that Statistics can tell a story and then they cannot tell a story at the same time. In the first three games this year for Wisconsin, uh, before last weekend's meeting against Michigan, Wisconsin actually outgained the opposition all three games, but came away with two losses in one victory against Temple, against Cal, and against Ball State. That's right. It's a tough thing to do to get all that yardage and not be able to punch it in. That's exactly right. I watched most of that California game, and they hey, they look pretty good, but I think that's the encouraging part when you think of Barry Alvarez and his staff up there. It's a case of, hey, guys, you're doing well enough to win these games. Now we just have to eliminate mistakes, and we can play with most anybody. So today I think we're maybe you're seeing them mature to that point. Second batcher penalty makes it first and 15. Swing pass right. Williams going to lose some ground. Before he's rattled out of bounds. And Lowry continues to complete the passes in. What a great job here by Matt Rowland. Watch this. They set the screen up to the right side. There's Matt Rowland waiting for him. And then you see Wells come over to help out. He spelled that out and stopped the play. Great play. Line of scrimmage will be midfield. And the Badgers have to get to the 28-yard line, so it is second and 22. Third down, although the marker says second. And we should have lost it down on the penalty, so I think you're right, Roger Grimmett. That's Tony, that's Lionel Crawford inside the 30 and close to the first down marker. Brian Wise puts the hit on him. This may be a first down and a 22-yard completion. Let's see. Yeah, it's going to be awfully close. They're probably going to take a measurement. Watch. There's Lionel Crawford right in front of you, the way he curled in there. And, oh, boy, look at that. Good move that time by Moses Santos, but couldn't quite get the handle on or get a hand on the ball. So it's going to be very, very close here for the first down. Crawford has moved from quarterback to wide receiver. We mentioned earlier that Tony Lowry sat out the 89 season, didn't quite like the idea of playing with the Badgers. And this year, the 
knocked on Barry Alvarez's door and said, you got any room for me? Lowry did. And so Crawford goes back to wide receiver. Yeah, I don't know who knocked at whose door. I got to believe that Barry, <laughs> Barry might have went looking for Lowry because he is an outstanding athlete. And you see Crawford there, an ex-quarterback that has some great athletic ability that can adjust to play the receiver position. You think Barry got on campus says, where is this guy? <laughs> Third and entry. And Wisconsin going for the first down. That was Melvin Foster to clog it up, but probably not before the first down. Yep. Well, once again, you're seeing Wisconsin put together a good drive. Sometimes you can look at that no huddle offense and talk about question mark or question that from the standpoint of the possible confusion. But, boy, I tell you what, Wisconsin is doing a great job here of executing with that no huddle. Out in the flat, that's Lionel Crawford again, and John Derby puts the stop on him. This is a six-minute-plus drive for Wisconsin, and it took up the middle third of the second quarter. We're now at the 625 mark, heading into the halftime break. Well, when you don't go to a huddle, you have to stay pretty basic, and that's what we're seeing Wisconsin do. Nothing too wild or exciting about the offense, but they're executing. That's the key thing. Crawford now, four catches, 43 yards. Robert Williams finds some running room. In fact, plenty of it. Touchdown, Badgers! From 20 yards away, veering left, was Robert Williams. Well, some great blocking up front, but Williams did a great job of seeing where that hole was. And then we talked about his foot quickness, how quick he got up through there. A good block coming in from the left side wide receiver I don't know that's Crawford or not but he saw that block coming from the outside and he cut out behind it and around it and then ran to the corner so boy oh boy Wisconsin here doing it quite a job put together a great drive here to put it in the end zone Rich Thompson is on for the conversion attempt And just like that, we've got a 10 to 3 ball game. Wisconsin takes the lead in Iowa. Let's take a look at it once again. Well, some great blocking up front as we, we talked about. Watch this. Uh, he cuts back this way. Watch this block, and he gets right there. That's right. Number 13, Lionel Crawford. Really through the block and broke him loose to get run to the corner. Williams gets his third touchdown run of the 1990 season. And we take a look. Oh, he picked that hole just right and it made the fear at the right time. He cut off the angle of the defensive back in pursuit. This is Hank with the last shot at him. Too late. And what's going through Barry Alvarez's mind right now? Hey, have we got a chance in this football game? Well, you can bet they're telling those kids on that side of the field that you're in this football game and you have a great chance. So don't make any mistakes and you're going to be able to do a real job here. So you got to give Barry Alvarez and his staff a lot of credit. You saw Hayden Fry. I'm sure he's wondering, hey, they came out and they're doing all kinds of basic things where they're not too fancy with anything. They haven't surprised us. So they're just out executed right now. Thompson from the 35 with Keenan Hughes and Jeff Antler at the goal line. Antler at the one. Out to the 23-yard line, and you got a feeling that Thompson has angled it to the freshman Antler. Twice now in the receiving end of the kickoff, he was gunning for him, and Todd Strupp stop makes the stop. There you go, 71 yards, 10 plays, and Williams with the 20-yard run. Rogers tucks it in. Out to the 28-yard line, you'll pick up five and a half, maybe six. 
that time to fake to Bell, and it looked to me like the interior of that Wisconsin defensive line went for it. They were thinking Bell, and Melvin Hunter catches up with. Well, you're 100% right, Mike, Roger. but downfield, give Wisconsin credit for some great pass coverage. Sean Smith had run a deep batter. Dana News ran a curling batter behind the linebackers. With that good fake, the linebackers weren't there, but the secondary covered well, and Rodgers didn't have a place to throw the ball. Second and five. There's Nick Bell. And all 255 pounds takes the leap over the 30 out to about the 34-yard line. And Scott Nelson again. That's right, Scott that Nelson, all 192 pounds, beats him in the air here. It's pretty good collision when you see Nick jump over this pile and bang, hit the head. I'll tell you this, Scott Nelson is going to get the game ball at halftime. He has been <laughs> in at just about every stop. Just he, hope that he can recognize it. Yeah, he plays the free safety position. The center fielder down deep, and he has an interception. First down, Iowa. That's Bell on the receiving end. To the 43-yard line. <laughs> Pick up his nine yards. Guess who again? Yep. Scott Nelson. <laughs> he says, wait a minute. That's enough of this. He's just a freshman. This is a seasoned defensive backfield for Wisconsin, by the way. They started with four senior, seniors on the corners and at the safety positions, and Nelson has played his way into the lineup. Does a good job back there. He's up in the leaders with 15 tackles for the season, but uh, I think he's almost matched that here in the first half. He's given in a lot of them. Bell on his 11th carry of the football game gets to midfield. Line of scrimmage was the 44. 11 carries and 89 yards now for Nick Bell. Brendan Lynch to stop. A right, little quick toss again to Nick Bell. They're working him hard. They worked those both of them back. Tony Stewart was in there. He ran it four or five, six times in a row. But some good blocking out there. Kajawa, nice block in the corner. To let Bell turn it up inside. First down, and it's spotted at the 49-yard line, so we'll make it 90 yards to carry. 11 tries for Nick Bell, and here's number 12. Look out, somebody might get hurt. Nope, didn't get the head of steam to put anybody out the ball. <laughs> Malvin Hunter catches up and up with Scott Nelson. Well, I know we can keep talking about it. It's some great blocking up front. Boy, that offensive line is really doing the job. And there's a typical Hawkeye offense. It isn't a real quick hitty type of thing. When you hand the ball off and pop right up there, they get the ball back to the back. He looks over where the hole is, reads the blocks, and then he runs through daylight. They're doing a great job up front. It's a 100-yard first half for Nick Bell. 12 carries from the 40, second and one. And here's number 13. 101, 102, 100, 107 yards. Huh? <laughs> hey, the meter's running. Fred Thomas, the staff. And a player down for Wisconsin is Nick Bell. Maternowski, I think, is who that is. Number 95, a little slow getting up. Kurt Maternowski, 6'1", 225, from Franklin, Wisconsin. Told you there's a definite Wisconsin flavor to the, or an Iowa flavor to the Wisconsin coaching staff, but on the Iowa roster, quite a few ball players that you see from the Badgers Day, Vanilla from Brule, Wisconsin, Suburban Milwaukee, Derby, Fry, and Kuyaba, and uh, Rulin, Saunders, Van de Zandy, and Bellaser, of course, also from the Badgers Day. Pretty good for recruiting territory for Hayden Fry, and I, I suppose if you had to put a mission statement on the desk of Barry Alvarez, get your own in-state ball players to play here first. And he made that statement right away as soon as he moved into Madison. He said, we're not going to let those good players out of this state. And I think he did a good job last year recruiting most of the top players out of the uh, Wisconsin area. Here's Tony Stewart on for Nick Bell to the 25. Hey, he's got some green. Tony Stewart first out of the backfield. The run 
will be 33 yards, and the Hawkeyes are back into this football game. They're on the right side of the offensive line again. Engeter, Baxley over there, Mike Devlin at center. What a hole they opened up for him. Then he got up through the, the line quick, and then he, with his speed, got to the outside and turned it upfield and got inside that pylon. So the Hawkeyes do a good job here taking that ball, countering the touchdown by Wisconsin and moving it in the end zone. Here's Jeff Skillet and the Hawkeyes have tied it at 10. So just like that, the Hawkeyes, and it's the same drive upfield. Tony Stewart first play into the ball game. Replacing Nick Bell, let's take a look. Lots of blocking over here on this side. Mike, Mike Miller in there even at this time. But look at the block. Bellisser. And then he turns it upfield with good speed. Yes, sir. Tony Stewart with his third touchdown on the ground. Let's take a look at it from 33 away, right on top of the pylon. You know, and I did the big no-no. You know that. On that one, Riley. I called it a touchdown before the arms went in the air. That's a big risk in this business. I like your confidence. I like to, <laughs> you like to see some coaching up in the back. You, you did take the guy a little while. He was standing there. Official, about it, yeah. Official standing right there at the pylon, hesitated at first, and then decided, well, it's close enough. Let's call it. And Roger Crimmins. Helping us out with the stats upstairs here. Said, well, the referee heard you, Mike. So that was <laughs> fair play. Short kick. Lee will let it bounce. He feels it at the 10. <laughs> A couple yards, and that's it. He made the mistake of letting it drop the first time because it went about 10, 15 feet in the air, but you better bring that thing down, buddy, because that's going to require 10 yards. That's either. right. And Matt Hilliard, he, he's really, I can see Matt Hilliard right in the middle. He gets through everybody and forces that receiver, the running back, Rory Lee, and bounce around a little bit, and look at the convergence on the part of the rest of the Hawkeyes. Good coverage by the Hawks. Carlos James, John Brooks, Great pursuit for the Hawkeyes on a shallow kick. Listen to the Hawkeye fans. I think they just got into the game. <laughs> oh, the Hawk fans are loving it here at Kinnick Stadium. Ron Gator at that time in their defensive tackle, staying low, getting the penetration. He got the first arm on Williams that time. Well, you can really sense this crowd all of a sudden really yep. got into this thing. Second and 11. You know what they're trying to do is to negate the audible at the line. And now the referees will call delay of game. And the question comes forth with that Big Ten rule. Let's take a listen. How much noise is disrupted? Yep. That'll force Wisconsin into a huddle here. And this, to my thinking, is the first of the game. I think you're right, other than on the sideline before the game started, they were in a huddle, and since then we haven't seen it. You wonder which one of the coaches told the fans, the you know, Hawkeye fans, let's get going with this thing. The pickup will be 21 yards for Robert Williams. Well, that's one way of quieting down the, the fans a bit. But watch this. A good job. And a little delay action in the backfield. Draw play. John Derby misses that tackle. Olin Sack misses that one. And Williams does a good job of moving it upfield. There is a Big Ten rule now in its third season, I do believe, maybe the second, about the noise from the crowd and if the wide receivers or the interior liner, somebody can't hear 
That goes back to that Michigan State-Iowa game deep in the horseshoe. You remember it, Mike. And Aiden Fry was most vocal in saying that that was the crowd too much into the game. And LaVoy Smith makes a stop on a second down play. But you see Nick Bell taking a breather. And he's had a great first half. 100 yards plus here to in the first half with the Hawkeyes only 10 to 10 here with the Wisconsin Badgers. Much to the surprise of a lot of folks, I gotta believe. Williams. Now with 81 yards and 12 carries, second and nine, Lowry over the ball. Whoop, loose ball and that's Montgomery back on top of it. Which you call covering up your own mistake. Montgomery was running before he took the pitch back, and it was behind him. Yeah, a little in bit. All fairness. That's right, a little bit behind him, but he probably should have had it. Got the bad hands right there, but that's the first time I think we've seen that kind of toss on the part of Wisconsin. And now the Hawkeyes call timeout with 31 seconds to go here, hopefully to force a kick yet. A punt by the Badgers. 10-10 ball game inside the one minute mark. 31 seconds remain. And the Hawkeyes have tied this in the late going of the first half with a spectacular 33-yard run for Tony Stewart. We have one more Hawkeye football game coming up here on Iowa Public Television. At this time, we plan to televise Iowa against Ohio State at 10.30 on Saturday, November 10th. We've had some exciting ones, and we look forward to the Buckeyes coming to Iowa Civic and Kinnick Stadium. Don't forget, Iowa against Ohio State, the Hawkeyes and the Buckeyes, Saturday, November 10 at 10.30. Mike Riley and I will be back here in the press box to bring you all the excitement. And you know, Coop, Coop's gonna bring in one wheel of a competitive team, a hard-hitting Ohio State ball club. They had always, some problems with Illinois last week. That's right, they always are, though. Regardless what kind of season they have, they always play Iowa really tough. Third and 17. Turning the corner is the fullback, Ellison. And Rod Davis from the nose and John Derby from the linebacker's position put the stop on him. Fourth down and Wisconsin will have to punt it away with 29 seconds remaining in first half play. We're going to be here at the halftime break. We'll have the statistical report, the highlights, and a few other items coming your way. Mike Newell and Mike Riley here on your statewide home for sports, Iowa Public Television. And Mike will say it again, we couldn't have ordered up a nicer day. A good crisp and cool and clear fall afternoon at Kinnick Stadium and a good, good battle between the Badgers and the Hawkeyes. Long way from over this one. That's for sure, and what a great day. The wind out of the south is gonna maybe have some effect in the game as it goes on. Obviously, the Hawkeyes call timeout here with a fourth down situation. 29 seconds to go to make Wisconsin at least attempt to punt. I've got to believe the Hawkeyes will be thinking about going after this one. But they're punting with the wind, so they should put Hawk the Hawkeyes back a little bit. But still with 29 seconds, you got to go for it and hope that maybe you can come up with a big play. Brad Brecky will kick it away from about the 15. Handle up on the receiving end. He's situated at the aisle with 35. Yep, that was Merton Haynes. Touchdown, Iowa, I think. <laughs> nope, we're going to have to wait. I may have saw this one a little too early. We'll see. That was Merton Haynes to yeah. come in and get a hand on it. Referee already signaled a touchback. Yep, and there's a flag upfield at about the 22-yard line, so we're going to have to put a read on this one. Boy, oh, boy, what a great job by Merton Haynes again. He likes to go in there and make those uh, blocks. That time he took the inside route, just inside the outside man of the uh, Badgers on the line of scrimmage. Well, I saw Scott Blake get to the football, but I don't know if they hung out. And 
I was about to ring up another six-pointer for the Hawkeyes. Let's, let's unravel this here. Look at this. Look at this. It's like all-star wrestling here. Come on, guys. Get off the mat. Illegal procedure on the part. So that, that part of the decision works for Iowa. Right. It is a touchback. Wisconsin gives it covered. And coming up with it is Tyrone Mahone. This is Trekkie. That's Merton Hanks. Now the scramble starts. There it is. Yep. All the way. Yeah, I thought... All guys had a couple people yep. around there, but nobody Ed, got the handle on it. Ed uh, Duyaba also... Uh, now the scoreboard says 16 points are up on the board. And it's been ruled as safety, but if you look at well, the scoreboard, it says 16 to 10 Iowa. There, now, see it now, the safety now he's given the safety sign. That's yeah. what I thought there it should go. be, but yep. at first he gave the touchback sign. So I thought the ball was, what does a touchback mean in a case like that? So it is a safety, so the Hawkeyes get the two points, and uh, Wisconsin will kick off from the 20-yard line. There's Burton Hanks, who has made a specialty out of blocking the punt, the field goal attempt. He'll find a way to get in there. Burton Hanks will, defensive leader, one of the senior co-captains, and a first-rate guy. Hayden Fry can't say enough about that young man, team leader. And so now the free kick for Wisconsin. Well, Burton, Burton Hanks doing it, that all through his career here at the University of Iowa. He does a great, he has a great instinct for it, or whatever it is, and he can jump through that line, and he always aims for the ball out in front of the kicker. And that's a, a little bit of a knack that some people don't have, but he does a great job with it. Well, that time I got caught calling a touchdown, it just wasn't there. But we'll take two on this one, won't we, Mike? I'll, I'm with you. Roger Kerman says I didn't yell loud enough for the official to hear me this time. Okay, that's Antler inside the 45 and with 11 seconds remaining. Good gain here, and the Hawks are in field goal range, but a bit of a tricky win. The top drop making the stop on Antler. What's your call here? Go for some yardage? I would be surprised they're going to dump that ball off to Nick Bell in a screen pass or something. Let him run for daylight. You're gonna, you know that they have all the defenders dropping back, looking for the pass. They'll be strung out. Hughes to the left. And to the right side is Smith. And the Hawks will take a little air out of the football here to talk it over with 11 seconds remaining in the half. 12-10 Iowa. The safety goes up on the board on the block punt attempt. It was Burton Hanks getting to Brecky. Brad Brecky, the punter. He made the contact and rattled into the end zone. And then you had your free form all-star wrestling in the end zone. And the Hawks get two points up on the board. What's Hayden telling them, Mike? Well, I think it was Wisconsin that called a timeout. There's a little confusion on the defensive side, but I think Hayden. Whatever he's saying down there, uh, wouldn't you like to know that sometimes? He's saying, now, don't make a mistake, obviously. Here comes the block. This is the, watch Burton Hanks coming right up the middle. Wow. Now oh, the big scramble for the ball. Pajalo right there. He's had Eddie Polly, I think, right there. But nobody for the Hawkeyes could get the handle on the ball. I thought, okay, I thought I read Carlos James in there at the top of the screen, but maybe not. Hawks with Bell and Kuyaba in the backfield behind Rogers. Hughes left, Smith right. Rogers two of four for 27 yards. Jimmy Ariel Lane from midfield. And angling out of bounds will be from the tight end position, Michael Kidley. Seven seconds remain. Yep, Aiden's thinking three, isn't he? Oh, I'm sure he's thinking three, but that's going to be quite a kick because it is a south win. So that ball's got to be, in my opinion, it'd have to be inside that 30-yard uh, line for sure, but anything beyond the 30 would be quite a field goal attempt. Seven seconds remain. Saunders to the left. That Smith to the right. Bumped away at the last second and getting a hand on it for Wisconsin is Eddie Fletcher. One second remains. 
And here's where you may just drop down in the football. Well, there's Skillet. If he attempted that, it'd be over a 50-yard attempt into the wind. I think that's a little bit beyond where the wind's blowing. I it's going to come a time where he'll get a crack at doing a 50-yard or better. And he's got the leg to do it, but whether or not into the wind is a real question mark. Just be interested to see what kind of play we pull here. We meaning the Hawkeyes. Rogers with the second left. Whoa! Introducing himself to Matt Rogers is Dewar Sharp to end the first half. And let's take a look at four, four receivers are downfield going to the end zone, and Matt Rogers waited a little too long. I think all he'd want to he'd probably want him to do is throw the ball deep, get it down in there, and maybe get a deflection and a touchdown, but Matt held on to the ball a little too long. So that's the end of the second quarter of play. We're at the halftime break, and the score is Iowa 12 and Wisconsin 10. We'll be back with a look at the first half highlights and the statistics in just one moment. And the swarm brings the Hawkeyes back down onto the playing surface for half number two, a two-point lead in what many would consider to be a a runaway opportunity for the Hawkeyes. A chance to belt a one in three Wisconsin team across the lot, but you will see statistically that has not been the case. Now, Wisconsin has picked up some yardage in this one. For sure, excuse me, Mike, but one thing that a lot of people wonder if Hawkeyes wouldn't come out and show a lot of different things, but there you see total yard. Can't get much closer than that. A couple of yards different. And it's just good, well-balanced type of offense is really what you're seeing there, even though Hawkeye's only thrown for 35 yards, but they've used the pass effectively to pick up some uh, third down situations. But time of possession, Wisconsin is doing a great job of controlling the football and keeping it out of the Hawkeyes' hands. A lot of people thought maybe Aiden Fry and his staff would come out and try different things, show Michigan next week some things that the, to have them work on. But it's been a real basic football game on both sides of the ball with the Hawkeyes grinding it out primarily on the ground using the, uh, Stewart, Bell, uh, Kujawa really hasn't run the ball maybe once or twice, but uh, it's just a good basic football game at this point. But Wisconsin really in the game. They've done a great job of hanging in there. Two-point difference here at halftime, and I'm sure Barry Alvarez told his players, hey, regardless of the pink locker room, you guys are playing a good football game, and just hang in there. Don't make mistakes, and you got a chance at this one. The Hawks have been a second-half ball club. They averaged 21 points in the second half and a per-game average of 35. In particular, that's been a third quarter effort. This is Antela, five yards deep in the end zone, and he makes the right call. Pretty good toe that time from Rich Thompson, who sends it deep into the end zone. The Hawks open on the offensive side of the football, left to right in front of us to open the second half, and we'll see if there'll be a Wisconsin no huddle football team offensively in the second half. We'll see that in their first series of downs, and here's one. Matt Rogers to come out in the first half. Well, it'll be interesting what adjustments either team makes because, again, it's been pretty basic as far as offense on both sides. Uh, I've got to believe that Wisconsin will come out and do pretty much the same thing they did in that first half because they did it fairly successfully. Rogers, three of six for 34, 35 yards in the air, and that's his fourth completion of the day, and it comes to Nick Bell who gets two yards. On the swing pass to the right side, and that's one advantage that Hayden Fry has tried to program into his offensive set through the years, is turn your guys coming out of the backfield into receivers. He really counts on that as an element that makes it all the more tougher to defense because that'll put a linebacker one-on-one -on, -one on that guy coming out of the backfield, and that's should he get hold of it, look at him go. That's right. That time was a screen pass, but they have this year used those backs a lot more effectively than they have in previous years. Nick Bell gets the call. He picks up a yard, maybe two, out to the 24-yard line. It'll be third and six, and Gary Casper makes the stuff. Eddie Fletcher up from the defensive secondary to help out, and it generally does take a couple guys to bring down the big guy, Bell. Bell in the first half had an excellent first half, 107 yards, uh, 13 carries, top ground gainer. 82 yards, 12 carries for Robert Williams, third and six. 
Rogers the first down and some daylight at the 40. Out to the 48 yard line before Scott Nelson brought him down from behind. Good option play by the Hawkeyes that time. Nick Bell, the tailback, was a trailing back that time. But as you see Matt Rogers go out down the line of scrimmage, he sees that opening to the inside, cuts it back a couple times. Excellent job of reading that defense. 25 yards to gain and to the 49-yard line. Rogers tucks it in when he sees the daylight. Guyaba and Bell stacked up in the eye. Right side is Smith. Left side, Saunders. It'll go to Bell. Pass midfield, look out. And that was Nelson again. Who makes the stop? Nelson, who I'm sure got the game football at the halftime break, is working on his second one. Of the That's for sure, the same play that they opened the second half with—a little screen pass to the right side. The Nick Bell gave a couple blockers out there in front of him, and once he gets turned up field and squares away, he's going to put on some moves, trying to get out to the outside that time. But uh, Nelson, staying right in there, cutting his feet from under him and stopping short of the first down. Pick up for Bell is eight yards, second and two. Three catches in this football game for Nick Bell, 21 yards, not to go with 107 yards on the ground in the first half and still counting. <laughs> Gary Casper from his linebacker's spot to make the stop. Yeah, a little quick toss to the near sideline again. Some good blocking once again. Look at the hole he has there. That's the big guy, Casper. He's been pretty active in there too, inside linebacker. 6'2", 224 from Downers Grove, Illinois. He's been in a lot of plays. Wisconsin traditionally has gone for big, big football players. Traditionally the biggest team in the conference, as a matter of fact, recruiting heavily out of the Chicagoland area. You see Downers Grove in suburban Chicago, an awful lot of that kind of talent through the years for the Badgers. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage, trying to make the turn, drawing a crowd, led by Brendan Lynch. Here's Nick Bell. Out of Hinsdale, Lynch is. You don't think he's got any Irish in him, does he? Brendan Lynch? Well, I can't see him very well, but I'd, <laughs> I'd, <laughs> I'd say you're right. <laughs> Just inside the 30-yard line, the pickup will be one, second and nine. Now Stewart in the backfield, wide to the left will be Hughes, along with Smith. Overthrowing Hughes is Matt Rogers. They work the crisscross pattern further out in the setup with Smith. In the slot was Hughes, and they did a little crisscross about five yards away from the line of scrimmage. That well, was a perfect pass in that situation. Wisconsin came with a blitz that time in their linebackers, and that puts man-to-man -man coverage out there on the wide side. And with that crisscross, Dean and Hughes is wide open, but Matt Rogers happened to overthrow him. They may try it again. Saunders. To the left along with Smith. Stewart and Kuyaba behind Rogers. It's third and nine. Yep, they did try to get. This time Saunders couldn't hold on. Same play. They came right back with it, but that time they weren't in a man to man. Strong safety came up. He took the short man, and the cornerback was taking the deeper zone, so he was right there even if Saunders had caught the ball. So the Hawks on fourth and nine. We'll be looking for the corner. And Jim Isaac comes on for the first time this afternoon. He'll release from about the 40. He'll take the bounce at about the 12. Down to the seven yard line. Yeah, and they're gonna call roughing the kicker yep. here, but the Wisconsin coaches are going crazy over there because the ball went through his hands and hit the ground and I think they have a legitimate complaint there I think once that ball hits the ground we'll now that I didn't know I didn't know that you could make the hit even we have one yep there's the hit you just made me a smart Four man down. I didn't know that that's a factor so the Hawks will maintain control ball is down on the seven yard line 
Yeah, I guess I don't know the rule either. I thought once the ball touches the ground that you can't, that he's an open man or whatever you want to call you it. You can nail him. You can nail him, but the Wisconsin coaches are still saying that. In fact, Gary Alvarez out there at the 30-yard line really trying to make the Now Barry's out there putting some heat on. Yep, he is. Fourth and four. And now Iowa will go for it. Alvarez is hot. And he's trying to call timeout, but he's not too talking, I don't think. There's Dan McCartney actually Dan, trying to get yeah. the time timeout called. <laughs> Got any lip readers upstairs here? <laughs> Barry Alvarez, a big part of the success story for Lou Holt and the Irish. Defensive coordinator there, spent a number of years on Aiden Fry's staff and Barry's upset. There you see the sideline, and don't give me that. I don't believe you. Come on. Give me a break. <laughs> now, the fourth in a series of senatorial debates sponsored by the Iowa Broadcasters Association will be presented live this coming Tuesday at 7 o'clock from Washington, D.C. Farm policy, rural development, fiscal policy, and budget priorities will be debated by Senate hopefuls, Democrat Tom Harkin, the incumbent, and Republican Tom Talkey, the challenger. Debate also will be closed captioned. Join statewide Iowa Public Television Tuesday at 7 for the next senatorial debate. Speaking of debate, you Jerry. saw a senatorial debate <laughs> on the sideline. Just because hey, Jerry Hendrickson, the referee, was over there debating once more time with Barry Alvarez. Barry's not going to let him off the hook. No. Line of scrimmage will be the 24-yard line. Iowa has fourth and four. This time the Hawks will go for it. Bell is in the backfield. Whips Stewart. Whips Kujawa. And right side it's Smith. And from the three-man set of the backfield, the first down, diving, is Rodgers across the 20, and he picks it up. Now, that's an offensive set that Wisconsin has not seen this year with three Iowa backs. That's right. That's there's a power offense that the Hawkeyes like in short yardage situation with that, that time with play action. Nobody open, so Rodgers does a great job knowing where he had to be and go for the first down. Sophomore linebacker Gary Casper from Downers Grove, Illinois, to make the stop. You see at first and 10, just inside the 20. Fox in their first offensive possession, second half leading 12 to 10. Call to Stewart. Inside the 15, he tiptoes his way and a gain of seven yards. Don Davey catches up for him for his down landed position. Well, once again, you can talk about the Tony Stewart, Nick Bell, and they're good runners, no question about that, but boy, some blocking up front. Four or five of the offensive linemen were out in that general area where Stewart made that turn up field, and they had people on, their, on the ground. That's why Stewart could pick up eight yards of it. Mike that Saunders run. is split left to the right side, Smith, second, and perhaps three and a half. This is Stewart, no place to go. Wisconsin, good pursuit on the football, and the loss will be three and a half, maybe four. Running them down was Melvin Hunter. Also helping out with Brendan Lynch in his linebacker spot. This is a little misdirection in the backfield. Watch this, and it looks like Stewart's going to get to the outside and turn the corner. Great block right at the top of your screen there, but look at the job there. Number 42, Brendan Lynch did a great job of getting to the outside and turning that play back to inside. Third and five. Shovels it up the middle, and Nelson comes up with the interception. Trying to flip it up the middle was Rogers. Was it Eddie Fletcher or was it Nelson? Well, we'll have to see. Fletcher, perhaps. We'll take a read on it. Second interception for Matt Rogers in this one. Yep, it's Fletcher. Well, with that toss, watch this. A, a pass he should not have tried. 
And when he did it, I looked down, just happened to see Hayden Fry drop his clipboard on the sideline saying, what kind of play is that? Well, so the turnover and first offensive possession for the Badgers from the 10-yard line and give Wisconsin some credit here. They have held an opponent viable offense coming out of the gates at the halftime break. The Hawks two up four minutes and 41 seconds on the clock and don't get anything out of it. Williams on the pitch back. Picks up five, maybe six around right corner. And the second part of that, as far as giving Wisconsin credit, you have to remember that with that running into the kicker, the Hawkeyes had another opportunity to pick up the first down, keep the drive alive, which they did, and then they still came up with a big play to stop the drive. So good effort on the part of Wisconsin. And we're looking for something like that to really spur them on now. We'll have to see if the Hawkeyes can stop them. Ware and Spaeth are split to the left, and on second and four, Matt Rulin makes the stop for the Hawkeyes. Good house on hand. I'd say near capacity here at Kinnick Stadium on a sunny Saturday afternoon. Next weekend, the Hawks travel to number one Michigan, Michigan Stadium and in Ann Arbor. And they're going to have 103,000 screaming Wolverine fans in their ear. Right now, the Hawkeye fans trying to get in the ear of the Wisconsin Badgers. Third and three, scramble for the football. The Hawks, according to Jim Johnson, are at the football. So Wisconsin turns it over. We'll have to unravel this one because it's quieted up in a real hurry. Here comes Doug Book. And I'd say that Book is indicated. We'll have to go with him, huh? He didn't have the ball, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Still have it unpiled over there. We're, let's see who does come up with the ball. Eddie Polly. Eddie Polly has the ball. Big turnover for the Hawkeyes here. I believe that's the first turnover in the part of Wisconsin in this game. So, Take a look at it. Well, the quarterback Lowry never yep. got a good handle on the ball from the center, and then the guards pull in there, kicked it around. And, and yeah, Moses good. Santos right in in the, in the mix. First and 10, the Hawkeyes. Line of scrimmage to 15. Bell draws the crowd. And that will be Kurt Matanowski. Wraps him up. You know, you've got to tackle Nick Bell up around the shoulder pad, or at least from the belly button on up, because his, his force, once he gets that inertia, you've got to go low on the guy. You may trip him up, but he's going to take you with him. Unless you can get him way down. And That's right. Get him on the tippy the toe. <laughs> <laughs> so many tackles he has broken. People trying to go from the waist up on him. Rogers coming up short of Sanders at the seven-yard line. And it'll be third down. Troy Vincent on the defensive coverage. Pretty good rush that time for the Wisconsin Badgers coming off the ball. A good sprint out action there by the Hawkeyes. It's a play that the Hawkeyes really like with a short square out pattern, eight to ten yards deep. But that time with a little bit of pressure, Rogers couldn't really get his foot planted and uh, zipped the ball to Dana Hughes. The ball came up short. Four straight Iowa incompletion, third and nine. Rodgers with Bell behind him. No place to go. The loss will be five, maybe six. And the Hawks will probably bring the field goal unit out. Alvin Hunter ran him down. That time, the option right. And there was no place for either Nick Bell or Matt Rodgers to go. So Rodgers tucked it in, and it cost the Hawks a loss there. Well, was a good job by the defensive. The Badgers bringing that out, staying on their feet, extending it all the way to the sidelines, and as you said, there was no place to toss the ball to Bell, no place for Rodgers to run. The attempt will be 36 yards with Hartley holding. It shakes loose. Matternowski on top of the ball, and that's Bell to ride him down at the 15-yard line. 
I don't know if that was just bad trajectory or a good Wisconsin rush. Well, it's a combination, but it was a trajectory was a key thing. He kicks the ball quite low, and there's a defensive back or someone coming up over the top of the line, jumping up to hit that ball. Maybe you can see it here. You see the guy go up in the air right there. Bang, and he got it. That was Troy Vinson over the top from the defensive backfield, and here's Maternowski with Bell to wrestle him down. Kill it right up on top of them as well. So the block field goal attempt, and at the 7.57 mark, Wisconsin gets its second offensive possession of the half. They've been in the hole all the way. Turned it over last time on the fumble, and now Lowry in the scramble. Whoop, arm went up, arm went down, and incomplete pass. Moses Santos put the heat on him. Well, Tony Lowry, Hawk fans don't like it, but he made the right move. Yeah, he did. He got rid of the ball for sure, even though he was going to run out of bounds right about at the line of scrimmage. But he That's got rid of face it. face mask. Is, he did. Look at Santos in pursuit. Good pressure there by Santos. Oh, as he tried to throw the ball, Santos got his arm, too. So good effort by Santos that time. That was Derby to roll them out of bounds. Second and 10 to 15. Spate to the left. To the right side, it looks like Tim Ware. It is. He's in motion. We have not seen Lionel Crawford here in the second half. This is Williams. Bursts his way to the 29-yard line and well enough for the first down. The game is 14. And Eddie Polly makes the stop on him. You gotta wonder if Crawford perhaps got injured in the first half. Let's take a look at Williams. Boy, he has a he has a nose for the hole, doesn't he? Yeah, a monster hole that time. Good blocking up front. That's a play that a lot of people remember when Lorenzo White ran wild against the Hawkeyes with that same type of cutback against the Grain. First and 10. We'll call it the 30. 15 carries. Now 16 carries for Robert Williams. He has 104 yards. You can add five more onto that. And it'll be second and 10. Here's John O'Hara, the offensive line coach, new to the Hawkeyes this year, talking to that offensive line. I'm sure he's saying, hey, guys, we got to just execute out there. Two times now, the Hawkeyes here in the second half, third quarter, have been in a good scoring position, but unable to get anything on the board. Badgers have worked their way out of the hole. The series started on the 15. The line of scrimmage now, the 34. Second and five. Montgomery turns the corners. Past the line of scrimmage for a yard. And John Derby makes his second straight stop. There's Matt Rogers talking upstairs with the offensive side of the coaching staff. Big play for the Hawkeyes here and Wisconsin. Wisconsin is Coming out of the hole, picking up a big first down. Third and about four yards to go. Brown splits to the left. Where to the right. Lowry on the call up the middle to Williams, and he stopped after a gain of one. Williams has been the most productive ball carrier for Wisconsin today, and Matt Rulin slows him up. And a quick snap here as Wisconsin tries to set up with Iowa coming on the field. Anila is deep to receive on the punt from Brecky. He'll field it at the 19. Tiptoes his way to the 27. And a flag is down on the far side of the field. There may have been a Wisconsin release upfield, and procedure will be the call. Legal procedure, kicking team. Now, here's a question. You take the football or you ask them to kick it over again? Most of the time, you want to take the That's football. Right. You don't want a chance to fumble on another attempt, but we'll wait and see. Bird in the hand, right? Has been accepted. Well, I think I heard him say. Well, so the walk-off is, of course, not after the punt reception. That would have to have been a flag down after the fact, but at the snap. So Wisconsin will indeed kick it over. Captain Mike Riley and Captain Mike Newell up here. We made the run call again. You know, I called that safety when I saw the indication touchback, and 
now that you think of it, it couldn't be a touchback. It either has to be a safety or a touchdown. And boy, when you call that early touchdown, a guy can get his press fire cold. At the 34, this is Anil again. Return will be five yards. Brendan Lynch. And another flag is down. Well, the strategy so far has paid off about a 15-yard gain with the second punt for over the first one, but we'll have to wait and see what the uh, penalty here. Well, yeah, if it's down. against Wisconsin now, the walk-off will be after the fact rather than before. We have a clip on the return. Whoop. There just went the 15 yards we talked about. Yep. And so Iowa will be starting a bit in the hole. Somewhere in the area of the 25, 24 yard line. You know, the hardest call in football today is that. On the receiving team, first down. There you go, first down Iowa. This is the holding call because there is now a new interpretation how the can hands can, more precisely, cannot be used. And I bet you if you look closely enough on every play, you see offensive and or defensive holding in the interior line. That's for sure. And it's just a matter, I think, what kind of a mood the referee or umpire is in sometimes if they do call it or don't. Nick Phil rattled out of bounds. Short of the first down by about a yard, Melvin Hunter angles him out of bounds with Eddie Fletcher. The reason I bring that up in the illegal use of hands and or holding, this time it's a clip, and that is a rule also that has undergone interpretation. Uh, many times clips are inordinately hard to avoid. You run into the backside of a guy. Well, that's exactly right, and the guy can be turning right at that time. It's, it's where the referee sees the, the play happen, and a lot of times it's right at the tail end, and it, we didn't start out being a clip. Second and one, Bell for the first down, past the 35. Well, one thing you can look at the Hawkeyes here, and they came out in the second half and really moved the ball well down the field, and they had the turnover, they got the ball back, uh, got the field goal block, so they've been moving the ball consistently enough, but they can't put the points on the board, and that's been the downfall for the Hawkeyes in the last couple of years. They can't put the knockout punch on, if you will, but here they are again, back at the 25-yard line, picked up the first down, Dick Bell running hard again. It's a matter of when can they go in there and capitalize on some of these things and put the ball in the end zone. It was in Smith right side. Kuyava, his first carry of the game, but he belts it past the 45 to the 48 yard line. Looks like it's enough for a first down on a first and 10. Troy Vincent catches up with him. It is a first down, and Ed Kuyava, sophomore fullback, coming on for Lou Montgomery injured. Yeah, he's a redshirt sophomore. Look, he had a good hole there, but. He's a good player. He's a north-south type runner. He lowers the shoulder, goes after people. And when he was played last year for the first time, red shirt freshman, he did a great job on the specialty teams, and now he got his chance to start. Tony Stewart tiptoes his way past midfield to the 47, 46-yard line. Yusef Burgess stops him there, and we'll call it a three-yard pickup for Tony Stewart. Now the key is in play selection. The Hawks would like to work in a good mix here, pass and run. And there's a guy in charge of stopping it, Dan McCartney for the Badgers, defensive coordinator. Stewart slides to the right side, takes it inside the 45 to pick up his three and a half, maybe four again. Short of the first down. One thing the Hawkeyes have been today, and that's basic, uh, maybe a little bit to the surprise of me, for sure, and to a lot of people, that they haven't had, I guess, to throw the ball that much. They've thrown it on a few situations, but overall, we're seeing pretty basic uh, handoff, run the football, try and pick up first downs, control the ball. And uh, they, when the Hawkeyes went in at halftime, I'm sure they felt they were doing a good enough job with that philosophy, because we're seeing the same thing here in the second half. Coach Riley, call me a play on third and two. Give the ball to Tony Stewart. You had that one right. Here's Stewart looking for the first down. Not this time, and the Hawks will have to kick it away. Greg Thomas gets to him. Well, Greg Thomas, one of the captains, he's the leading tackler on this Badger team with 57 stops in the first four games, and that's a lot of stops. 
when you're looking at a defensive back coming up and having to make those passes. Got him at the ankles. Kick to receive, and the punt will be Troy Vincent. For the Wisconsin Badgers, he'll be situated at about the 10 yard line. Isaac, his second kick of the game. From the 45, gets a good spiral on it. And that's Vincent at the 10 and no place to go. And Vincent is dangerous every time he touches the leather. He is ranked in the Big Ten standings as a punt returner. As a matter of fact, in 1989, he led the conference in punt returns. This time, Ted Bailey brings him down. Yeah, he is a dangerous back back there when he takes that punt, but it's a good coverage that time with Ted Bailey and Marvin Lampton also, number 33 down there for the Hawkeyes to get a hand on him just as he received the ball. If you haven't joined Iowa Public Television on Sunday, let me give you an idea of what's coming up tomorrow. The great cellist Yo-Yo Ma performs live from Lincoln Center tomorrow at 2. Race to Save the Planet can be seen at 6. And David Yepsen continues with his month-long series on Sundays called The Candidates with David Yepsen. Hope you can join us tomorrow night and afternoon at Iowa Public Television. Stood him up at about the 17-yard line on a first and 10 from the 12. And you see Eddie Polly, junior defensive back from Oklahoma City. A little quick hitch pattern one more time. Good enough for five or six yards. That's a good type of offensive strategy. You can't run the ball every time. To run that little quick pass, it's as good as any five-yard run, that's for sure. Spade goes left. And again, we haven't seen Lionel Crawford to buy knowledge and missed the second half. Scrambling forward. On a second and four is Williams and Jason DeMont. Brings him on. Now a critical third down conversion for Wisconsin. Badgers in the worst way. Want to get something going. They have stayed close to the Hawkeyes and have played an excellent strategic football game against Iowa. The Hawks with a buck 25 remaining in the third quarter lead by two. Third down. Over the middle, the intended receiver was Kerry Miller, and the pass went behind him and credit the Iowa defensive rush for the force throw by Lowry. Well, they did because they came with everybody. You can see the linebacker slips it from the outside. It's got Jason Dumont from the left defensive end. They really got a good hit on Lowry, but he had to dump that ball off quick because everybody was coming at him. Adela will let it roll dead at about the 30. Takes a Wisconsin roll to the 26. And the Hawks will have it in their third possession of the second half with 58 seconds remaining in the quarter. 55 yards is the release for Brad Brecky. You see Wisconsin with Iowa all the way statistically. And we'll bring up that strange statistic. Iowa, or rather Wisconsin, outgained its first three opponents. California ball stayed in Temple but lost two of the three games. That was right up to the Michigan game last week. And there you got Matt Rogers coming in. 58 seconds here in the third quarter working against the wind. So on the change of the quarter, the Hawkeyes will have that fourth quarter to hopefully put together a good offensive attack and try to get some points on the board. The big guy, Phil, wrapped up at the 29-yard line. Alvin Hunter in on the stop along with Scott Nelson. And it'll be second down with 38 seconds in counting. There's Nick Bell on the... He came to the sideline side with his left arm hanging. If I have to guess, it's going to be a stinger. Pinch the nerve in his uh, left arm. Let's see if he gets a hit right there. That hit probably didn't cause it, but right there Ooh, was top. Right there, yep. Nelson over the top. Second and seven. Stewart tries to turn the corner, and he does out to the 35. Short of the first down by about a half a yard, I think. Now, that's Nick Bell. Gary Casper makes the stop on Tony Stewart. And did he get it? Yes, he did. 
That's a good job by Tony Stewart that time. He did a little hesitation as he came out to turn the corner, but he waited for a couple blocks to get set up, and then he lowered his shoulder and popped it up in there, picked up some extra yardage on his own for the first down. So the Hawkeyes, who started this series of downs on the 24-yard line, will have a line of scrimmage out at the 36. We're at the end of three quarters. It's Iowa 12. And Wisconsin 10 will be back for the fourth and final quarter in just a moment. Fifteen minutes go up on the board. We're in the fourth and final quarter. A scoreless third quarter. Wisconsin two points shy of Iowa. And the Hawks trying to get something going. Rodgers with a home run ball. That was Sean Smith. The intended receiver. Boy, he put that one up long and hard. And Smith couldn't get underneath it. Well, he sure did. And taking advantage of the win of the first play here in the fourth quarter. Trying to... Hit the bomb and maybe break this game open, but pretty good coverage by Wisconsin all over the field on Sean Smith. Some good coverage, but Dane and Hughes in the near sideline running the pattern across the middle. He's pretty well covered too, so give the Badgers credit there. Second and ten, second play of the fourth quarter. On the delay, that'll be Stewart gets his all to get back to the line of scrimmage and another six, maybe seven, but short of the first down. And it'll be third and about two. Yeah, six or seven of those all in second effort, too. Good job by Tony Stewart. Some pretty decent blocking up front, but you can see here where he gets hit almost in the backfield with an arm tackle right there. And he spins off of that and he bounces back and forth two or three times. Hopefully finds a couple blockers there eventually and gets it up for a nine-yard game. Nick Bell is into the lineup for the Hawkeyes. Tony Stewart takes a break. He has 14 carries and 87 yards, Tony Stewart. And you see some numbers that would be of concern. And now we see that three back backfield and up the middle, good enough for the first down. Are the Hawkeyes and Nick Bell is slow to get up again. And the ball carrier that time I believe was at Cuyaba. And there's Nick Bell. Brendan Lynch makes the stop on him. Iowa went out to a three to nothing lead in this football game on the field goal by Jeff Skillet. 45 yarder with 343 remaining in the first. Wisconsin tied it early in the second. Rich Thompson from 37 yards away. That with 1323 remaining. Then Wisconsin took the lead at 10 to 3. Robert Williams scampering in from 20 away. Fox tied it at 10. Tony Stewart in from 33 yards out. And late in the second quarter, 17 seconds remaining, the Hawks got the safety. And that's where we are. 12 to 10 Iowa. Credit Wisconsin for staying in the trenches toe to toe with Iowa, playing a strategic, a good tactical football game against Iowa. The game plan has been right to this point. It certainly has been. You got to give them a lot of credit. I think in the third quarter, when we saw the Hawkeyes move the ball down and within scoring distance they came up with big plays they uh, forced a turnover with a, a bit a bad pass really on the part of Rodgers but then after turning it back they blocked the field goal so hey, it's been a, a pretty much a ball controlled by Iowa all the, in the second half but Wisconsin kept them out of the end zone and off the scoreboard first and ten with Sean Smith right Damon Hughes left Rodgers straight drop back at the delayed hand off that is Stewart and Tony was one tackle away from busting that one up. Pick up of 13 yards for Tony Stewart and Greg Thomas. From the secondary brings him down. Great second and third effort here. Super effort. Watch this now. Takes that ball on a delayed handoff. Breaks a couple tackles, but there's what you like to see. Lower that shoulder and pop into people. That's what Lou Montgomery does. That's what Michael Saunders did when he's a running back. Tony Stewart can do this. He's healthy. His legs feel good. Look at that. He takes two or three pretty good wraps and still gets five more yards. First and Cham, the 36. Stewart again. And just enough time in the huddle to catch his win. This time he goes over the top for a pickup of nine. This is the second time this season Iowa has had two 100-yard games in the same game. Stewart now 16 carries and 110 yards and fell 
with 20 carries, 139 yards. What more can you ask out of two running backs? Well, I'll huh? tell you what, that's pretty awesome when you think about that two guys can do that as, as often as they have twice. But the fact is you can keep a fresh back in there all the time and really put the pressure on the defense. Second and two, Stewart carries for the third straight time. No place to go. That's what you call making something out of nothing. Stewart picking his holes well. The pickup will five, be five, maybe six. It was second and two. And Scott Nelson takes the punishment in the defensive secondary. Lots of blocking out there. Mike Miller's out there. There's good blocking. Great to see 69, pushing man out. Tony Stewart cuts back off that block. Once again, lowers the shoulder and pops in there for extra yardage. 22 yard line will be the line of scrimmage. And the Hawks in a sustained drive will have a double wide left. Saunders, Saunders the furthest out, and Smith is in the slot. The tight end is Titley, and the handoff, Kuyawa! <laughs> Good job. Oh, I tell you, that double <laughs> wide left threw an extra linebacker out for the coverage, and that's the time you want to go to your fullback. Watch this as fake pitch, though, and then the quick handoff inside. A pretty good quick hit, a great block right there on the linebacker, and Jawa try almost got a cut back into the wide open spaces for the touchdown. you got to believe he's a happy kid from Wisconsin. First start is his uh, career, redshirt sophomore. First start for the Hawkeyes against his native state, and he's having a pretty good game. Not only has he run pretty well, he's been a great blocker out there for Dick Bell and Tony Stewart. Second and inches. Into the backfield for the Iowa Hawkeyes is Marvin Lampkin. Carlos Fowler puts the stop on him. You saw Herky the Hawk get kidnapped on the far sideline by members of the Wisconsin band. A good shot of Marvin Lampkin. There's a kid that's going to see an awful lot of playing time in the stretch run. You bet. I, you're going to see a lot of him just because he's so quick and he can make the big play. He's an exciting type of runner. Give him a little running room and he can jump through holes and he's got great lateral movement. So he'll be effective. No gain. It's first and 10 from the 11. We'll call it first and goal. And Tony Stewart inside the 10 yard line to the 6 yard line. You know, you take a look at Ed Kuyawa. Last weekend, Eden Fry was so, Paul Kuyawa, I said, uh, I mean, uh, was so complimentary of Kuyawa in his game against Michigan State, said he had no blown assignments every play of the football game. This time he comes out for Lou Montgomery to start. And what more could you ask from a starting fullback? Four carries, 30 yards. And now in the trenches, I wouldn't be surprised to see the ball go to him. You might go to your sure guy, a guy like Stewart. But right now, we're going to have to think about it. Because there's time out on the field with 10-27 remaining. Fox by two, Rogers calls the club to the huddle, fell back in the lineup. Now well, there's some confusion out there, because Hayden Fry on the sideline is running down there, giving that signal to time out. When you're down that close in the six yard line, second down, they can pick up a first down inside the one yard line. But when you're that close, you can't make a mistake. You can't have the wrong people in the field, those types of things. And Aiden probably wanted a timeout to sort things out to make sure they had everybody out there and with their assignments, knowing all their assignments. And so let's hope that for the Hawkeyes' sake that they can put something together here. Wisconsin's done a great job of holding the Hawkeyes out of the end zone, but just starting this fourth quarter, the Hawkeyes have put together a great drive. And if they're going to capitalize on something, now's the time to do it. If you enjoy the sports presentations as well as the cultural events, documentaries, and the weekly programs here on Iowa Public Television, you should know that a group of Iowans called Friends provide the funds for these programs. If you are a member of Friends, you can show your support for IPTV by sending your check for $25 or more to Friends. Post Office Box 6450. Johnston, Iowa, 50131. That address again, Friends, P.O. Box 6450, Johnston, Iowa, 50131. Second. From the seventh. And turning the corner, corner is Kuyaba. Well, it shows Hayden Price confidence in this young man. Not afraid to give him the ball when the Hawks are knocking on the door. 
and everybody's looking for Stewart. Scott Nelson has stopped. I'm going to give Nelson the game ball right now. Forget about the end of the football game. <laughs> I think you're right. It's been all over this football field. More importantly, though, the Hawks nursing a two-point lead would like to fatten it up with 9.59 remaining. The Hawks with 309 yards on the ground need three more right here. It is third and three. Nick Bell! Touchdown, Iowa! Hey, Nick Bell gives the Hawks a little breathing room. The first score of the second half. It comes in the fourth quarter with 9.41 remaining. Bell belts it in from three yards away. Nick Bell doing a good job that time as he moves to his right, waiting for a hole open when he sees that he turned it upfield. I think Kujawa out there in front of him uh, threw a pretty good block for him, and he cut back inside of that. So good job by the Hawkeyes down there in close territory. Second down and six. Two plays later, they're in the end zone. Going for two of the Hawkeyes. Three men in the backfield. This what make, makes it interesting. It'll be the option left. Rogers, no place to go. Gets his two. Boy, a gutsy move for the Hawkeyes. Going for two. No place to go, and Rogers found his way to the end zone. And just like that, the Hawkeye two-point lead is a ten-point lead. Well, that's a great job on the part of uh, Rogers. Going to get a chance to see the touchdown here. See if we can watch Nick Bell, and he sees that opening, turns it up, and just gets it over. And there's the official on the other side making the call. Yes, indeed, to the Hawkeyes, back up the lead. Let's take a look at the extra point. Rolling left will be Matt Rogers. The hole closes in a hurry, but it opens up again. Where am I going to go here, Coach? Well, I don't know if there's a mistake there or not. Looks like he didn't even have a trailing back pitch the ball too but he saw daylight turned it up and got the two points rogers trampolines in from boy well, took the tie from about the three yard line you know on the offensive side of the football they take a deep breath every time the quarterback is in a run situation and every time you leave your feet you increase the opportunity of taking on the injury Wisconsin to the short man and out to the 20 yard line is Wisconsin and there's a guy who's not listed on the game roster nor on the travel roster so Mr. X number four makes his appearance it could be Chris Hine but he is not on the dress list for this particular football game but on the big roster he is. Chris, you did a good job if it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Bell for the Hawkeyes. Gets it in from three yards away for Bell. That's his fourth touchdown run of the year, his sixth touchdown of the season. Now the Badgers from the 27. This is Lowry. Fans like a mess. Moses Santos runs him down. Well, Lowry's looking to his right to throw that little quick hitch pattern that they've had some success with, but great job that time. Eddie Polly, the defensive cornerback, was right up on it. The receiver seeing that took it and cut it deep or ran deep with his pattern. Polly was all over him, so Lowry had no place to throw the ball. Loss is three, second and 13 from the 25. Here's the little guy, William. Past the 30 to the 32-yard line, so he gets some of it back before Leroy Smith puts the stuff on it. Eddie Polly is in on the stop as well. Melvin Foster leaving the field. Yeah, Ted Bailey going in to replace him on that weak side the linebacker position. Let's hope that Melvin isn't uh, hurt to any great degree. Looks like he's probably all right limping just a bit, but boy, he's turned into having a great year. We don't want to see him hurt and have to sit out in it. 
Third and six. The pickup was seven yards for Williams. Whoop, the chest loose. <laughs> John Derby feels it like a short staff, but the play is dead. The arm was going forward. Moses Santos with the heavy pressure, and the Hawks fans come to their feet. Here's Lowry dropping back. And you see that Santos come from behind right there. Got an arm on him just as he threw them. John Derby, you see him getting in position, thinking maybe he's going to intercept that, but couldn't quite get to the ball. Linebacker's dream. Handle up at the 35. Picks up seven on the return. Believe it or not, that was Tony Lowry's fourth incomplete pass of the game. He's been quicking. But we are late in the eight minutes left in the quarter. They're throwing a lot of those little short hitch patterns, which is a, a good offensive strategy. It's basic, but it's a good ball control type of offense. So, yeah, he's been doing a pretty good job with that. He hasn't had that much success with the passing game. He completed about 60%, but not for a whole lot of yardage. But that, uh, I'm sure the strategy was to try and keep the ball away from Iowa. And there you see the Hawkeyes jumping out a little bit more as far as the difference in total yardage. Rogers puts it upstairs. Sean Smith to the 25. <laughs> and you can see Matt Rogers. He just threw his hands up because he knows that for a good pass there was a touchdown. He threw the ball a little short behind him. Yep, 33 yards. Laid it up. And Smith goes up in the air to bring it down. Well, Smith makes a great move that you don't see there, but he's way behind his defender. And look at this, how he has to turn around. And the ball's thrown to the inside of the field and he can stay in stride. He'd be in the end zone. First and 10, the delayed handoff. On the drop back, Rogers hands it off to Stewart. And he'll bring it down to about the 22-yard line. Pick up a three, maybe four, and Gary Casper catches up with him. We're inside the eight-minute mark from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. Mike Newell and Mike Riley. Now Stewart is walking off. He's put in a full day's work, as has Nick Bell. Both are well above the 100-yard mark. Iowa trying to establish the running game after picking up, what, 80 yards last week against Michigan State on the ground, and the Hawks need to establish that ground game. Here's Bell. Inside the 20, he'll pick up three. And the Hawkeyes. With the wind at their backs here in the fourth quarter. Got the touchdown from Bell in their last series on a 70-yard drive, 74 yards and 13 plays. You see Nick Bell coming out of there again. I've been trying to watch him in the sideline to see what they're working on. I think it's his, in his shoulder. It's good, it's good to see Tony Stewart back in the game. When he twisted that one time, they're always a little bit afraid of what might have happened because he has a bad knee or had a bad knee. He's back in there. Stewart and Kuyaba are in the backfield. Rogers gonna have to dig his way out of this one. Back to the line of scrimmage. And he's angled out of bounds by Greg Thomas and by Scott Nelson. Inside the six minute mark and a 10 point Iowa lead. And there's man to man coverage downfield all the way there as Rogers had no one to throw it to. Here he tries to put a juke on the uh, Wisconsin defender there, but couldn't quite get past Greg Thomas for the first down. Here's Jeff Skillet on for an attempt of 35 yards. He is one for two today. Missed from 45, hit from 37. <laughs> 35 yards is the field goal for Jeff Skillet. Well, that time he got the ball and the trajectory a little bit higher than he did when Wisconsin blocked it going the other direction to the south end zone. And Jeff Skillet pops that pretty good. He's the type of guy that Wisconsin was trying to do the same thing with their defensive backs and jump up there. Skillet's the kind of guy that when he drives them low, there's always that chance of a, somebody that can have some pretty good leaping ability to get up and get it. But he works on getting that ball up in the air. He's in good shape. You can tell from Jeff Skillet after the release what he thought about it. And he knew what was going through. He connected on a 45-yarder. 
here in the first quarter. And on a 35 yarder here in the fourth. And now the Hawkeye lead is 13 points with 5.28 remaining. Wisconsin, after Iowa went to a three-point lead, Wisconsin picked up a seven-point lead at 10 to three. And the Hawkeyes with a 12 to 10 lead after the safety into the halftime break. Now the Hawks with two fourth quarter scores, put 11 points up on the board. And upfield on the return. That's Rory Lee. Troy Vincent normally is the punt returner and also kick returner, although Lee factors in. And you see the drive. Good drive by Iowa. Yeah. Get that ball in the end zone, uh, or excuse me, get the field goal out of it at least. A little 23 points to 10. Defense have been playing pretty good here. You think back, they had the Wisconsin moved the ball pretty well on a couple occasions, got in for one touchdown, but overall, I think you have to look at that defense and say they're still playing a pretty tough football game. Interception, Iowa, and upfield, here come the Hawks with Keegan Olentak. Touchdown, Iowa! <laughs> The tip pass to Nolan Zack. Talk about the defense doing their job. Here's a big play. A tip ball. I think maybe John Derby was the one that was right at the receiver and tipped the ball. But Nolan Zack picked it off. And the thing that you really have to compliment the Hawkeyes with that time is once that ball is intercepted, there were five or six of those defensive guys over there leading the way with throwing the block. The escort to Jason Nolan Zack into the end zone. A big play by the Hawkeyes. Olin Jack, a former quarterback of the high school ranks, he knew how to pick his holes in the read the block and still it is two on the extra point attempt. And the Hawkeyes, two-point lead, is now a 20-point lead. Iowa 30 to 10 on the Badgers. Let's take a look. Let's see who tips that ball. Pretty good pressure in there that time by Moses Santos. Yeah, it was John Derby right there with that receiver. Now Derby goes out. Helps a little bit, couple blocks downfield. Moses Santos right there. Good job. Well, that's great when you see that defensive group, the unit, come over there and throw some blocks. That's a fine if there's a statistical category from George Wine and Derby gets half credit for the touchdown for getting the chip and <laughs> Olin Jack gets the other half. There you go. That's certainly a football name in the state of Iowa. You remember Lion Olin Jack. Olin Zacks out of Decora. Yeah, the interesting part in that whole family, they're just all around good athletes. Jason Olin Zacks, quite a baseball player. Yes, he is. Oh, boy. And I, if I remember, I line Olin Zacks was as well. On a Big Ten championship team, too. Sure. Right. Skillet tees it up. That's Lee at the goal line. 5-11 remains. Two quick scores for the Hawkeyes, and the Hawks want to keep the pressure on. From the four, Lee. Gets the good return out to the 30, and may have rather lose. The Hawks get their third turnover of the football game. And on back-to-back -back plays, the interception, and then the kick, the Hawks are in great position again. I think Carlos, Carlos James, the one that got the fumble, I think the ball was knocked loose, though, by uh, Ted Bailey coming down. The reserve linebacker running on those kick teams. They will get a chance to see it here. Murray Lee takes the kick and moves it upfield. Yeah, there you can see Ted Bailey coming from the left side. He's the one that got a piece of the ball, knocked it loose. Carlos James comes up with it. Jim Hartley comes down to work the quarterbacking spot for the Hawks. Got his man Kuyava. He gets it inside the 30. The pickup will be four. And it'll be second and six. So in the backfield is Jim Hartley. 6'1 and 205 pounds. The sophomore from Woodstock, Illinois. 
Jim Hartley, but whatever he's going to run an option play today and try and go for that extra yard. <laughs> Poor guy came in that Cincinnati game. A lot of people remember that. He ran the option, turned it upfield, put a good hit on the tackler. Next thing you know, the tackler's running the other way in the football. Kuyaba and Lampkin are in the backfield. And that's Lampkin. Whoa! Inside the 20 yard line to the 18. Well enough for the first down, and Eddie Fletcher takes the hit. And Lampkin, the sophomore from East St. Louis, we have a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Line of scrimmage was the 28 yard line. And now it's going to be the 38. The Hawkeyes got caught for holding. And yep. obviously they'll take that and move it back. Holding, offense, second down. Second and long. We're doing the wave up here, huh, Mike Riley? There's your Roger Crimmins and Virgil Miller, huh? That's Hughes. In motion, left side. Lampkin again, delayed on the handoff. No place to go. Past the line of scrimmage and a pickup of one. So Marvin Lampkin's run of 12 yards is negated. Well, you got to call that a net loss. After the penalty of, what, 27 yards? The gain of 12, the 15... Yeah, and on that play, they tried to run the draw play to Marvin Lampkin just to get him the ball and find some running room, but it looks like there's a little confusion in the backfield between Jim Hartley and Lampkin trying to get that handoff. Wide to the left to Mike Saunders. It'll be third and nine. Backing off for pass coverage with Wisconsin. Setting up at the 40, Hartley. He takes the hit, and so does Iowa. And the person, the newcomer coming on, is Sherman Parson. It looked like only yeah, got 84. Uh, it couldn't have been Tidley. It's Thorson, if you yep, can see Thorson. here, he's fully extended. He really takes a, a, a hard hit. Defensive back Troy Vincent for the Badgers. We said Thorson, and it's really, I have to straighten it out, Ron Ryan. Thorson, also wearing 94, is working on the defensive side of the There you go, exactly. I knew that Thorson, I, sh I should know that. He is a linebacker. The attempt from 38 yards is no good. Fifth wide that time for Jeff Skillett. And with 3.07 remaining, Wisconsin will take over at that line of scrimmage. First and 10, left to right in front of us. Badgers stayed in this football game a long time. As a matter of fact, Aiden Price said earlier this week that last week against Michigan, 41 to nothing was the loss at Camp Randall to the Wolverines. But Wisconsin played some even enough football against Michigan in the first half. They stayed in the football game. That's what it sounded like, and I think you can see the same thing happen here. They're, they played beyond, I think, the first half this this game. They shut the Hawkeyes out in the third quarter. Uh, when the Hawkeyes were moving the ball pretty well, they got to give them a lot of credit that they came in here to play tough football and finally got caught up here in the, in the fourth quarter. Well, just inside the three-minute mark, and Jeff Nelson from the defensive end position makes the stop. And Iowa getting a lot of players in the ball game at this juncture. Lowry remains the quarterback for Wisconsin. Yeah, Lowry wants to go deep. You can see him looking down the left sideline, but good coverage by the Hawkeyes in the secondary. Gave Nelson a chance to come in and make the sack. Loss is seven yards, second and 17. The 25. Lowry, and out of the backfield, he'll go to the tight end, Kerry Miller. And Jason Devon on the coverage. Hawks next week travel to Ann Arbor to meet number one Michigan, Wisconsin. That's the Dyke Stadium in Evanston, a matchup against Northwestern. Wisconsin, with four straight home games to open the season, 
play seven home games out of 11. Like those ads, don't you, Mike? It's a nice place to be if you can win them. That's a big thing. That's it. Over the middle, that was Kirby off the shoulder pad. Lowry on the frozen rope. And Derby. Oh, John Derby's going to take yeah. a little razzing about that. You know, frozen hands or whatever they're going to call them. The boy, he made a great break on the ball. A curling right between the two linebackers. He and Ted Bailey were the linebackers. And John read it perfect. He couldn't hang on to it. Recky and now Anula at the 27. Pass to 35. And the Hawkeyes with two minutes and eight seconds remaining. We'll go right to left in front of us. Well, we have an opportunity. I'd like to thank up in the booth here, Virgil Miller and Roger Crimmins with the broadcast. And of course, the sports information staff of George Wine, Phil Hattie and the fine crew. You see Barry Alvarez. I'd like to thank Steve Malchow, sports information director for the University of Wisconsin. They make our job just a little bit easier, don't they, huh? Well, they sure do. They have <laughs> a lot of things, but it all makes sense. That's the best part. <laughs> Here's Hartley in his second Whoa. set of downs. Whoop, I'm going to go this way. How about Jim Hartley? Out to the 45-yard line. And again, he makes something out of nothing. And he might have gotten the first down, Troy Vincent. Hartleib has the good, quick feet. He can get around in. Yeah, he does. That's quite a play that time. When he's coming to this side, the near sideline, he has to cut back and go all the way to the other side. Did pick up about nine yards, a little short of the first down. As you looked at Barry Alvarez over there, you know there's a lot of disappointment, the fact that they're not winning this game, but I think there's a lot of encouraging things that he and the rest of the staff can take out of Kinnick Stadium and continue to work on to build a program up there. That's Lampkin. Dancing out to the 48-yard line. And with the first down markers moving, we have a stop clock at a buck 19. Ferry Alvarez. And I'd say the Badgers could leave Kinnick Stadium with their heads held high. They gave Iowa. The Badgers did all they wanted today. The Hawks kept that pressure on and kept the ball away from Wisconsin in the second half. It was Iowa ball control and possession. Too many horses for the Badgers because, well, Iowa keeps coming right at you. Bell goes out, Stewart comes in. Uyawa with a couple critical pickups. And that's a good point, Mike, because I think when we talked about the, this team in that first game, what was the character gonna be or the personality of this team, and they went, you know, they played a pretty good game against Iowa State, gave up a lot of points. They went down to Miami, gave up a lot. They played a great game last week in defense against Michigan State. But I think we've seen the character. It's a good, hard, uh, nuts and bolts type of offense or team period. Just keep pounding away and don't make mistakes, and I think there's a lot of success to be had. Hartley over the ball. It's second and nine. Back to the line of scrimmage. Clock will continue to roll at the 22 second mark, and that may be the final play of the football game. We shall see. Gary Casper puts the stop on him. And the Hawkeyes keep the string alive against Wisconsin. Iowa has not been beaten by Wisconsin since 1976. And Hayden Fry has never lost to Wisconsin. And the ball game is over. The Hawkeyes win it by a margin of 30 to 10. The congratulations underway. Hayden Fry will shake hands with the likes of Perry Alvarez and his partners, Ken McCartney and Bernie Wyatt. You know, another thing to think about, I got to believe Perry Alvarez and Hayden both are glad to get this game over with. Yep. You talk about the hype and the heat and Barry leaving a few years, going to uh, Wisconsin, taking a couple assistants. Everybody's kind of wondering what would happen. Now it's over. Now they can get back and settle down and uh, think about the rest of the season. Well, a hit for hit Wisconsin State in this football game. The Hawkeyes come back from the seven-point deficit to lead it by two at the half, 12 to 10. A scoreless third quarter. And then the Hawkeyes in three straight possessions following two turnovers, punch it in. Second half touchdown for Nick Bell. Field goal for Jeff Skillet at 35 yards. 
Jason Olenzak, a 33-yard interception return. And in between all of that, a two-point conversion for Matt Rogers. That shows me some guts for the Hawkeyes. They knew they needed the 10-point spread at that juncture of the game. We were well into the fourth. That's right. And when you look at this game and you wonder who was outstanding as far as a, maybe a most valuable type of player, I don't know who you can really say. I'd like to say the tailback is. <laughs> well, <laughs> Tony Stewart and, and Nick Bell combined for well over 250 yards, yes. so that's quite a performance by a one position. Second time this season, the Hawks have put Stewart and Bell over the 100-yard mark. This time, it's well over 100 yards for each ball carrier. The senior twosome of Tony Stewart out of Union, New Jersey, and Nick Bell out of Las Vegas, Nevada. And that has been the one-two punch, but don't play down the effect of Paul Kuyava in this ball game coming on for Lou Montgomery. That's a great point. A great job of blocking. Ran the ball well when he had to, but uh, he's kind of the unsung guy because he's out there doing a lot of blocking for those guys that are gaining 100 yards. Mike, our thanks to you. Certainly a pleasure to have you on board. You're fun. A reminder, Iowa Public Television, next Hawkeye football telecast will be Saturday, November 10th at 1030 as the Hawks tackle the Ohio State Buckeyes. That's Ohio State against Iowa from Kinnick Stadium on Saturday, November 10th at 10.30. Do plan to join it with us. The final score, Iowa 30 to 10 over the Wisconsin Badgers. And now for Mike Riley. I'm Mike Newell saying good night for Iowa Public Television. Major funding for this program was provided by Friends of Iowa Public Television.